and that'll be that. Okay, so here we are. It says it's recording. So, um, guys, plain and simple. Um, maybe I'll edit this down. Maybe I won't. Depends how long it gets. But, uh, guys, this is basically just a raw, on the spot, real, uh, one month check in uh, with one of my clients. So, uh, this is my buddy Jared. We're gonna leave out last names for just confidentiality. Um, but uh, Jared signed on for professional coaching. Uh, about exactly a month ago. So we're just going to do a one month check-in and uh, we have not, I want to put this out here and he can say the same thing. We have not talked about this, about what we're going to say. We haven't done, you know, any, Oh, I'm going to say this, you say that we have none of that. So this is completely raw on the spot. So you guys can take a look at what uh, you know, what I do for coaching and what's going on with Jared. He's a real person that uh, uh real person, you know, going through his real life and trying to, you can see where he's at and see some of the, you know, what, what everybody needs help or coaching or wherever they are in their bodybuilding, fitness, athletic journey, uh, where they're at. And that's going to be different for every person, but you can see, I just want to keep this short, sweet to the point and honestly real and authentic. So you guys get to see, uh, what, uh, what this looks like and also, you know, what it should look like. So let's just get started here. So, uh, uh, Jared, um, it's been about a month. Why don't you just tell people, just you can keep it as short as long as you want, but just tell people uh, where we started at a month ago, where we started at a month ago, you know, uh, nutrition, training, hormones, everything. And then we'll tell them uh, where we are now and, and give an update. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for chatting with me. First of all, I didn't know you owned any shirts. So uh, every, every YouTube video, it starts off like this, right? <laughs> Well, I, I do that mostly because people, I do that mostly because people watch the videos longer and I get more views and I used to wear <laughs> shirts. I used to wear shirts, cutoffs and some that. And I was just like, okay, I look good shirtless. So I might as well just take them shirtless like that. Uh, what is that? That Scooby <laughs> guy does on YouTube anyways. Sorry, go yeah. ahead. So I found you on YouTube, man. So um, yeah, I don't really do social media except for YouTube because I just listen to long form content. I would listen to you a yeah. lot and uh uh, finally, I, I think you just popped a thing. You're like, oh, I'm doing coaching. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I, I reached out to you and here we go. So uh, when I got started, I was in a in a cut, like a pretty, pretty severe cut, I would say. And uh, yeah, I was struggling with um, like super cravings of food. Like um, I would think I was really mm -hmm. garb addicted and um, I didn't know a couple things that I was unaware not, of. Not, not, not just carb addicted, but sugar addicted. Cause when I, when we started, cause we talked about carnivore a little bit and I said, I don't, I don't force anybody to do carnivore, but we're going to do, we're going to go low carb, high protein, some healthy fats. And I said, remember, cause when we started, I said, oh, here's the carbs that you can eat. But then you didn't go for the carbs. You just always, you went straight for the sugar, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, that sugar, sugar high, man. So that's been a problem all my life. And I mean, honestly, I think it's sub at least substantially broken. Like, uh, so you let me have a cheat meal for like first time in, in like a month or whatever. So, uh, that was supposed to be tonight is what you said, but it was actually yesterday because we're doing something else this evening. But, all right. Well, thanks for telling I mean, me now while we're alive. It's fine. That's, that's yeah. It. Yeah. Well, they, uh, the only, I mean, bread was amazing, but everything else I was kind of like, Oh, this is kind of, this is not what I remember. Like I, I thought like yeah. I would think about rice and I would think about sugar and all this. And so I had a, you didn't say, you said, Hey, what you expressly said was, Hey, have a nice meal. Don't go crazy. And uh, so I took that as like, well, I'm going to have dessert as well. So I had some ice cream and a cookie. They weren't as great. Like I was like, what is up with this? I've been wanting to do this for like a month and I don't know. I felt Yeah. yeah. And, and you'll cool. notice too, cause like your, te your taste buds will, Sorry guys, we're getting just we're we're going off track a little bit. I wanted to tell you where you were at before, but oh, the, sure, we'll, sure, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Well, hang on, but I want to tell them this, this too because I write about this in my book, Super Mail, guys. So you're gonna want to want to listen to this, or when you get into the book, read that through uh, once or twice. But this is an important note too because based basically because of the food, the way food is in America, and everything is processed garbage, tons of sugar. What ends up happening is your taste buds change. You know, God made our taste buds in a certain way where, you know, we want, we crave what? We crave protein. We crave essential fats because that's what we're made of too, our cells. 
And then also we crave what? Glucose, because glucose is the body's uh, natural, most abundant energy source besides fat, okay? But the thing is, is that our taste buds, they basically get so, um, we our taste buds get so, uh, how do I, hypersensitized in our brain, our brain gets addicted to not, not, you know, God made us to eat what, an apple, some berries, you know, some wheat, some natural stuff, not this refined down chemically, you know, high fructose and all this garbage they make synthetically in a lab. So what ha- ends up happening is that our taste buds change and our brain gets rewired to crave that dopamine. So basically, long story short is this, is that once you go carnivore or even low carb and you remove all the trash or even a completely uh, for a completely non-processed diet, only natural food sources, but all these diets encompass, encompass the same thing. Once you do that, what, what ends up happening in your brain is your brain resets those connections. So when you go back and you have sugar, like I had a, what was it? I had like an, uh, uh, a really sweet apple, you know, a honey crisp. I couldn't even like, I was having trouble finishing it. I'm like, I'm like, man, this is almost too sweet. I almost don't even like it anymore because it's not Mm -hmm. natural. And, and that's a whole nother thing I could talk about is that apples, you know, apples never were the same as they were now. Apples were never so sweet and so full of sugar, but they basically, they took fruit and they bred it down to make it even sweeter. And they, they, they changed it. They've modified it, but that's a whole, the whole, the point of the matter is, is that if you go either natural, carnivore, or you get away from that garbage, your taste buds and your brain reverts back to its default setting, which is, you know, all this garbage, this really, really sweet stuff. It doesn't, it, it's too much. You almost don't even want it. And I think that's what Jared is hinting at here. Yeah. So back to how stuff was. So I didn't know that my training was pretty, pretty bad. So uh, you kind of clued me in on that. So um, I, you, shifted that around. I, so basically I wasn't going to failure, maybe not even close to failure, really. So I Okay. So yeah. So that. now we're talking about, now we're switching to training. So I just want to make this easy for people to follow. So with the nutrition, he's, he talked about having, you know, being heavily carb addicted, specifically sugar, right? That's the biggest thing. Yeah. And then now he's talking about training where training is what, not going to failure, you're not going close to failure and keep going. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, I would get all my sets in like how I was supposed to. And, you know, I'd had previous trainers and stuff, but never like really gone to failure. So that was, that was new. And, uh, I was substantially sore for quite a while. So now, now I'm liking it. So, uh, and you increase my frequency as well. So I was going three, perhaps four times a week on like, like in a row. And then I would have like three or four days off and then hit the three or four again. Well, now it's like uh, three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. And so I, I added it up and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm probably going about 50% more. And so I'm hitting those same muscle groups faster. So that seems good. And uh, I was also injured when I came to you. So I had a shoulder shoulder injury. Um, the anterior delt is what the, the – Phys- physical therapist said and uh so push day really sucked it was like basically rehab day and- yeah and that's front and that's front doubt guys just for you know anterior and front they're the same thing i i get still get confused on that sometimes because if i don't say that for a while but sorry go <laughs> ahead you had your shoulder injury yeah so that's that's improving um and the and the big thing with hormones because i was already on trt and had to the high end of the range um but uh you're like, Hey, you should check your IGF one. I was like, Oh, no, I said, I said, I said, I said, where's your, I said, okay, that's your testosterone. I said, I asked you, where's your HGH level at? And he said, I don't know. What do yeah. you mean? I don't know. What's that? And yeah. I said, not only want to replace your testosterone, but you also want to make your, make sure your HGH is peaked up. We, I mean, if possible, you know, we, a lot of clinics, there's good clinics. Jared goes to a clinic with it, which is actually pretty good. You know, surprisingly, they're pretty good. They brought them to the top of the range, you know, you know, and I guys, I told you before the sweet spot for hormone replacement in terms of testosterone is always 1000 to 1500. If you want to be your best as a male, it's just period. Okay. And then go watch my other videos. I fight people on that all the time. But the, if you are a healthy 18 year old with good genetics, you should be at 1200 right around there. No exceptions. Okay. So for testosterone replacement, why would why would you not replace back to around that 1,200? But uh, so Jared, you know, I asked Jared because we talked about his shoulder injury and I said, and I was going to talk to him about his HGH level anyway, right? Get your testosterone where it should. 
And then I said, well, what about your HGH level? And he said, well, I don't know what it's at. You know, my doctor never tested. And that's another problem with a lot of these clinics is that they'll replace your testosterone, but they won't, they won't even check your HGH or they won't address it unless the, the person specifically asks. And even my clinic, Prometheus HRT, I have to tell every person I send there, I say, I say, make sure they test for IGF-1 because there's no perfect. The best way to test your HGH levels is, is uh, from IGF-1 because HGH is, is goes up and down in huge pulses throughout the day. So you can't accurately measure that except IGF-1. So uh, go ahead and keep talking about your shoulder. Yeah. So um, I went to the clinic. I was like, hey, I want to get this test. And they're like, no problem. Uh, turns out I was at, I don't remember exactly, but it was something low. It was like 62. It was it was like a hundred, it was like a hundred something. It was like 160 maybe, or hundred. 162. Yeah. It was, and, in, it was, in, in, it was in the hundred. Yeah. It was in the hundreds. And the bottom line is, is that, so Jared had the testosterone back where he was, you know, as of Jared was cranking his testosterone right back to a good, healthy 18 year old. But guess what? His IGF one level came back. I think it was like 150, 160, which is like a 60 year old. Okay. So that's the reason his shoulder wasn't healing. All right. So in our, in, you know, in our, the human body, like, you know, God made our body where what's happening is we're, are, we're supposed to continually be replacing cells. So let's say you go to the gym or you're going to work or even you're, you know, you're playing sports when you wear down your joints you know, or you're, you wear down your joints, you burn through synovial fluid, your joints, tendons, ligaments, all this stuff is supposed to resynthesize. So, but the problem is if you have low HGH, you're not resynthesizing this stuff fast enough. So it gets worn down and you get injury prone. Yeah. So I started taking um, uh, a CJC 1295 slash Ipramorelin blend uh, in the evenings right before yeah. going to sleep. And it's really, I, I think it's helped a lot. So um, yeah, I, and I certainly would sleep better. So that's been good. Yeah. Uh, I haven't yeah. tested like back, like, oh, hey, where's stuff at? Um, I think you mentioned Seth, like uh, IGF-1 takes maybe a while to kind of reset. So a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks to come up. Okay, well, it's probably, I probably can check, see where I'm at now. I'd just be interested to see, you know, based on the dosing I'm taking, how's that how's that looking? But my yeah, shoulder... I would, prob I would probably better. wait, probably wait like two more weeks and then and then get tested because I think it's okay, only sure. been like maybe two or three weeks. Of... Yeah, something like that. So that, that was hormones. And then um, I knew when I signed up, I was like, oh man, Seth's all about this carnivore stuff. I didn't watch a single carnivore video of yours. I just, every time you would talk about it, I would just be like, ignore in the YouTube feed. So I went back and listened to all of them. I was like, what am I getting myself into? Uh, <laughs> and then I listened to a ton of other ones and everyone kept saying, hey, it's like a really healthy way to kind of, um, I don't know, I'm a horrible proponent of it because I don't remember it exactly, but I decided I agreed with you. So you're all like, hey, you gave me notice. You're like in two weeks. Uh, you know, we, we need to go full carnivore here if you want. So just slow down on, you know, start eating more, more, start eating more meat now, start eating less, less carbs. And then finally I was like, that's harder. So I just, mm -hmm. told you about, about a week later, I said, I started carnivore. I'm not eating any carbs anymore. So it's been great. It was not great at first, but it's, it's been great now. Like, um, I, I actually, I found more meats that I like, like I eat a lot of steak and I bought, oh, uh, who knew a air fryer was a thing. Uh, I'd never. It's awesome, it. isn't it? The air yeah. fryer, you can cook, you can cook anything in there, literally anything. Yeah. You can cook. Chicken's actually good. Like yeah. it's yeah. Ch Chicken tastes like, like what the kids are saying now, it's dog like water. Dish. Chicken, chicken tastes like dog water. If you put it in a, in a, in a pan on the stove, bacon, you got to air fry the chicken. That. Yeah. So the air fryer, man, my chicken comes out toasty like not toasty but like plump and juicy and then the kids are like oh daddy's so good at making chicken i'm like <laughs> I, just, I literally just shook some stuff on there seasoning and shoved it in so it's i, I like that air fryer that's that's yeah, James yeah, yeah. just make sure you check your seasoning for uh not only the stuff i told you about but make sure you check it for uh silicon dioxide or and or silica they're the same thing but silicon dioxide or silica is basically just super fine ground up sand. And the oh. FDA allows them to put that in your food because they say it's okay in small quantities. But if we look at, at patients, medical studies, and you do you dig through the 
what we know in here, this the silicon dioxide silicon dioxide slash sand or silica slash silicon dioxide. That's the same thing, guys. But it's basically super fine sand that they put in your food to keep it from clumping. And they put that in spices and also in your vitamins. You better check your vitamins. Uh, and why don't you want to be consuming super fine sand? Because it destroys your kidneys. Okay. It will give you, uh, and it has given, you can read online, it gives tons of people, um, what is it, uh, kidney stones, and also can damage the nephron. So, I, you know, again, it's like in America, we have to weed through all of this garbage, but uh, I'm just telling this, to, I think I already told this to Jared, but check your spices, check your seasonings, check your salt. They put it in salt all the time. They put this, the, the silicon dioxide or silica in salt to keep it from clumping. Uh, you know, so it looks nicer, but that will destroy your kidneys. And if, and if you're urinating and your urine is all frothy and bubbly, uh, you probably check all your vitamins, check your seasonings, check all that and throw out you know, that stuff. Cause you don't want to be destroying your kidneys. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, man, there's always something more. So <laughs> I know I gotta, I'm, it's, it's, it's annoying, but I, yeah. my, my, I'll just tell you this is that what, how I found out about this is okay. After during COVID was going on, I was taking tons of vitamin C, right? And I was just like, okay, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get uh, sick from this, blah, blah, blah. But my wife started yelling at me. Well, not yelling at me. She was like, she was like, why, why is it, you know, uh, you know, all these bubbles and foam, you know, in the toilet, blah, blah, blah. You know, what's wrong with your urine and this and that? Cause I'm, I'm a man. Sometimes I forget to flush the toilet. And by sometimes I mean a lot, um, but the thing is, she's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> he's like what's wrong with you i'm like i don't know i don't know i like i don't know why it's all bubbly and whatever and then come to find out is i went through all the came across it on accident because i've been finding this and everything so i went through all this stuff on silicon silica slash silicon dioxide and basically it's super fine sand that the government allows in our food spices and guess what it was guess what it was like the third in, i don't remember which but it was in the, all the vitamin c tablets i was taking so i'm popping all these vitamin c tablets taking consuming uh, I'm popping all these vitamin C tablets on the back. They have silicon dioxide or silica in them. And uh, so I'm pumping sand in my body and all that frothing bubbly stuff was me peeing out the sand. Man, man, if I, you know, if I could sue the FDA or just what, I, you know, I, I, we're not supposed to sue people as Christians, but it's like, that makes me upset because they're harming other people and they don't care because they, they allow, the, they allow a lot of bad stuff in our food as long as, uh, um, you know, as long as, uh, it doesn't cause, you know, major damage, but it does cause damage. You only got one pair of kidneys. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. I just, this stuff makes me so mad. Cause it's like, unless you know about it, they're putting all this poison in your food. I mean, would you go into your backyard and, and take sand and eat sand out of, out of your, your kid's sandbox? No, you wouldn't. So why are they putting that in our food? Anyways? Okay. I'm going to get upset. Keep just, sorry. Uh, keep talking. Okay. So I can't eat sand in the backyard anymore. Apparently. <laughs> oh man yeah so uh funny story like i had some bacon and like 10 yeah. minutes later you text me and you're like oh hey hey hey! i just did a deep dive on uh something phosphate. sodium nitrate sodium nitrate sodium, sodium phosphate and, yeah. you're like don't eat anything in that i look of course you know it was like and it, it was name brand whatever it was hormel or something bacon i'm like oh my gosh like uh you're saying, hey, when it breaks down in the stomach acid, it creates a poison. So yeah, ni ni nitrosamine, and that's another thing. I don't want to just have this whole thing be about the poison that's in our about food. The but I mean, list. yeah, yeah. I mean, the I government won't the government won't let you consume nitrosamine because it's poison, but they'll let you convert, but they'll let you consume sodium nitrate that turns into nitrosamine. I mean, it makes me want to rip my hair out. Is that this not the stupidest thing you could ever? So, I mean, and then the sodium phosphate, I, I'm just going to get a video up on that too. Sodium phosphate destroys your blood vessels and arteries. And because it does that, it destroys your kidneys. So, um, and they used to think that was safe, but now, you know, the Germans came out and they said, no, this, whether you have kidney disease or not, sodium phosphate destroys your kidneys because it's super uh, bio, it's a super bioavailable form of phosphate, much more than found in nature. And it's in very high amounts. So, if your food, if your meat specifically, guys, whether you do carnivore or not, if you're eating meat that contains sodium nitrate or sodium phosphate, throw it out. Don't eat it. You're poisoning yourself. We'll do this. Okay. Let's do like the let's, let's, this video. Let's we need like, I need like one central list. Like here's the ban list and why.
Oh, and then the, uh, you said you inject sometimes, like I do daily injections. It's keeps me so level. Like I just mm -hmm. divide by seven, whatever the, you know, cause the doctor yeah. says twice a week. But for me with my lower SHBG, I just like it daily. And then I never forget. Yeah. I, I don't like days that I have to try to remember, oh, it's Tuesday. I need to do dot, dot, dot. So anyway, you said you were going to do like a, what were you injecting in your shin? Well, or something? I have to do an injection video. I mean, there's specific muscle. Like I know you got my book already, but like I, I listed on, um, Is it in there? I listed on there, 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 there's three muscles on the shin. So I'll have to you you show you right now. The book. So yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I should. I mean, but if you Google it, you can easily just. Uh, I guess but, I could Google it. Yeah. Yeah, just there's there's three specific muscles. Um, I think my favorite was the what is it, fibrous longus in the. It's basically in the shin calf region, but like the shin, well, and then somewhere. Yeah. In the so long story short, the the two best, you know, and I've done everyday injections. I've done every other day injections. Um, if I'm in, if I'm on a competition grind, I typically will do every day because like you said more stable blood levels you feel better even though it's just you're switching from every other day to every day and i use that 30 gauge 5 16 i mean that's a teeny insul insulin syringe yeah, i use a 29 gauge so okay so yeah no well even to me i'm maybe I'm, i just don't want the scar tissue but I, if i i do right now i'm doing every other day uh every other day half inch 29 gauge in the outer calf basically all right so um, let's see here. Let's see. So you had the sugar addiction, sugar and carb addiction, eating junk, not, not tons of junk food, but you're eating junk food and then your training was garbage <laughs> and then your horm and then your hormones, testosterone was good. HGH was at the level of a six year old. You didn't even know. And you had that shoulder injury. We're still rehabbing that one month in. Um, let's see here. What, what else did, what else, was there anything else we changed besides, you know, mm, diet, your training, your hormone to carnivore was yeah, the big carnivore thing. Carnivore was a huge change. That's for sure. Well, so. I didn't, yeah. And I didn't, and I think you already said that, but I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't, you didn't get on with me or you didn't sign on with me and say, uh, and I wasn't like, Oh, you're going carnivore. No, I said, I said, here's our options. I said, we can do, um, cause I don't, I don't tell, I don't, I don't tell people, hey, you got to eat meat now. No, only meat. What I tell people is here's our options, you know, so we can either do uh, high protein, essential fats, because that's what builds muscle, high protein, essential fats, or specifically high amounts of animal protein, because that's the most bioavailable, uh, bioactive protein absorbed 30% more than plant-based proteins. Okay. For those people that don't know that. Um, so high protein, essential fats, and um, uh, low carbohydrate. All right. That's great for building muscle, period. Great for building muscle. Or we can do carnivore, which is we can do meat only. We can do meat and eggs only, or we can do meat, eggs, cheese, butter, you know, other animal products as well. So, um, but we tried low carb for like all but like a week or something. Mm -hmm. and Jared couldn't stick to that. It was He's still going right for the sugar. So for a lot of people, if you have a problem with sugar or processed junk, it's just so much easier to just go straight to uh, the carnivore, go to some variation of the carnivore. And um, I told Jared this, he didn't know this either. But if you guys try this for yourself, you'll know this is that here's the big secret. The more carbs you eat, the more carbohydrates you eat, either from, you know, regular carbs or sugar, the more your hunger is going to be. The more carbs you eat, the more your hunger is going to be because the carbs will lower your blood sugar after your body after your body spikes the insulin to remove the glucose from the bloodstream. So, in terms of fat loss, which we're not really trying to do with Jared anyway right now, but it's more of a uh, breaking the uh, the cycle of junk food. But um, in terms of fat loss, the higher you you have your carbs, the more hunger you're going to be. So that's just that's just because you're oh, man. I won't even get into that. That's the whole science. Um, uh, let's see here. So let's, let's just talk about, uh, you know, where we're at now. We changed the training. We changed the nutrition. We fixed your hormones. Um, your shoulders coming back. Oh, uh, sauna. We told you that Jared doesn't have a, um, hot to sauna access right now. So I've been telling him to take hot showers, hot, warm, hot showers, pre-workout to kind of boost his HGH and then go train. Uh, he's, you're ordering a sauna, like a what is that a wet wet sauna right now? Yeah, I gotta I gotta pick one out. So 
Um, I, I, you know, I've certainly been doing the hot showers before. I actually had to I actually had to ask my gym, hey, like you got to turn the hot water heater up. This is like lukewarm. So they're, they're <laughs> like, oh, okay, no problem. We didn't even know where the hot water heater was. So anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if it helps, but I have I have noticed I like the break in my day. I just like just sit under the hot water for a second and just yeah think a little bit. So that's like a little space between just relax in the afternoon. Yeah. That's it, what just kind of fits my, my schedule, if you will. So it's nice. Yeah. yeah it's, it's nice. Just, and like... It's nice. So, I, and then I get out and, and hit it and, um, yeah, so, uh, that's, that's been good. I, I, I maybe it's helping. Um, so I don't really know, but I just kind of do what you say and go with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you, uh, do this if you feel like it do one or two days of training without it because that's when oh, you'll notice the big difference because yeah, yeah. i went to the gym and the hot tub was closed i always hot to pre-workout everybody knows that if you read my book or listen to my stuff I, and why do you do that because it shoots your hgh to the roof if you can if you can hot tub or sauna before you train don't stay until you get dehydrated and get heat exhaustion but stay until you get nice and warm your heart's beating then you go train the reason to do that is it shoots your HGH through the roof. Okay. Hot tubs, even better than sauna. Cause uh, water transfers heat better than air, but you get in there, shoots your HGH and then you go work out. What happens, whatever muscle groups you're hitting is getting smashed by the HGH. You just put in your bloodstream. So for fat loss, muscle building, that's, that's great. So I went to the hot, I went to the gym, not too, not too, too long ago, but the hot tub was out and I was like, Oh, well, I'll just get nice and warm uh, before I squat, you know, I started squatting. I was like, forget this. I'm leaving. I just didn't even want to deal with that. <laughs> so I, was just like, I was like, this doesn't feel anywhere near as good, you know? So I just laughed and I did squats the next day. So yeah, so maybe do this then, you know, uh, and you can, you can text me or whatever. Tell me how that ends up, but uh, do uh, let's do this. Um, you know, do try one or two days and don't take a hot shower, but do it back to back. So like, uh, and don't take an off day between. So, you know, we we're going to do the legs and then the, legs pull push so then do legs with the hot tub right or with the with your hot shower because you don't have a hot tub and then the next day on on your pull day uh don't do a hot shower just start start you know do your warm-up and start training and and then uh see how that goes and then the next day when you do push do the hot shower again but and then you'll know then you'll know how big of a difference is it is okay i'll try it out man no so, seriously seriously yeah. yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes um, all right i did have some yeah. questions uh i don't i don't know if you got any more update questions uh but just just some in general from here questions for you no no i just wanted to so that's where we started that's where we're at now and then let's uh yeah let's address address your questions and then we'll say uh what we're going to do moving forward as far as um any any changes then we'll be on our way yeah, so you had me eat, or you had me log, like I don't log, I was logging everything before, so that's a big change. That's exhausting, and so now it's really nice not having to log, so. Yeah, you don't have to log or track anything really with carnivore, you just have yeah. an idea of what you're going to do. You yeah. have an idea, and so, but you're like, hey, we need to find out how much meat you're eating, so, uh, so I did that, I think like a week ago, week and a half, and I was surprised at how little I was eating, which was crazy. And I'm like, I feel full, but I'm just not eating that much. And then you had me track it a couple of days ago. Did you ever check that out? I tried to eat I, more, by the way. Just I glanced, I, I glanced over it, but I, or oh, okay. I, I, uh, I, I saw what you messaged me. I can't open my phone right now because I'm using it for Zoom. Can you just give me a, uh, just tell me how many pounds it was per day on average? Well, uh, sure. It's an app that tracks like macros and stuff, so. I didn't add up the pounds. I can if you want. Well, that's fine. No, no. Yeah. Just give me the pro. Give me the protein total. Give me the I protein total. Four hundred twenty-six grams of protein for a total of three thousand four hundred thirty-one calories. And I don't know how it says fifteen grams of carbs. How's that possible? And uh, because I, to my knowledge, I ate no carbs. And then it said one hundred seventy-four grams of fat. That was one day. And the previous day was a total of two thousand six hundred forty-seven calories. 283 grams of protein 130 yeah that sounds i don't know how you'd get to i don't think you i don't think the first number is accurate because you'd have to eat you know to get put it this way to get 400 and what was it over 400 grams that would be 
over four pounds of chicken breast, the equivalent. Okay. That so would mean you're not eating ounces of chicken breast, 10 ounces of a New York strip, which is nice. I've been eating a lot of steak, another 10 ounces of chicken, and then 13 ounces of 95% lean beef. And so that's 51 ounces, what divided by 16, eight, 3.18 pounds of meat on that big day. Yeah, 3.3.18. 3 so 3.2. So that would be, so taking the leanness into factor, that would be about 350 grams of protein. So that's, yeah, that's pretty high. It's not, yeah. So that would be, so, so basically Jared's eating between three and a half to three pounds of meat at a body weight of 140. So we're going to build muscle. Well, I did that. try to eat more that day. So okay, the, yeah, I can I'm tell. wondering I if got. the day before was more accurate when I ate. 2,600 calories. That's probably. Yeah. So you're eating, you're eating, we'll just, we'll just say on average, you're eating around three pounds worth of meat. All right. So that's okay. good. That's, that's a typical. That's because we don't want to force feed. I mean, we don't need to either. So with the, with the, the, if the carnivore diet's optimized, the, the beauty of the carnivore is just, it's so much easier. You don't have to track stuff. And it's just easier to just say, Jared, just do this, give you like one thing to do, you know, like, oh, try to eat around three pounds of meat. And then we'll fill in with other things that we need, like some eggs or some cheese for essential fats or vitamins and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that, so yeah, so you're around three, we'll call on, on average, you're around three pounds of meat per day right now, which is perfect for your size. Okay. I'll keep it muscle. rolling. Uh, yeah. I, and and, and don't, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to force feed again. You don't you just, you know, just eat as, eat as, Eat as you feel comfortable. Don't force feed. Don't be hungry. But if you're eating, if you can eat, as long as you can eat between, we'll just say two and a half to three pounds of meat a day, maybe even a little over if you're really hungry. But if you're eating around there, you're not going to have any problem putting on, we're putting some size on you, especially now that your training is fixed or being fixed. So I know we're still working on the squats. So your form is good, but we just got to bring the oh, intensity up maybe oh a little gosh. bit more. Yeah. It's going up though. Every, here's what's good. cool. Every time I go to the gym, my lifts are up. That's fun. That's fun yeah. again. So yeah, yeah, and and notice notice too that um the reason besides the hormones and the nutrition with the training, the training that we're having you do is is three days on, one day off. So you're training the full body every four days. But the, the here's the thing is is that the intensity super high, but the volume super low. He's only Jared's only doing one or two all out sets. And, you know, and only just a, a few exercises, like three or four exercises top. So, you know, he's never doing more than he's doing typically like four to eight sets and he's leaving, but at maximum it's intensity. Way so, less, yeah, way less than I've ever done. Way less exercises. Yeah. I, I hadn't squatted for years. So I was like, OK, let, I guess let's do that again. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I do a question for you. Can I share my screen? Let's see, does this work? Yeah, I could care. I could care less. Go ahead. Okay. So first of all, let's see if this pops. Are you seeing are you seeing me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or are you seeing the folder? I'm seeing the folder. I'm not seeing uh oh this is what popped oh, up. Oh, there we go. There hey, we go. I'm, yep. I'm proud of that. I I this was like because you have me send my squat videos because it's like this the sucky compound lift. I'm like, yeah. man, that's the biggest I've ever looked. So I, I'm pretty, pretty proud of that one. Yeah, your shoulders, like I told you before, your shoulders look a lot better. Maybe you're just, you know, you're not used to that as much. But I, I your shoulders are definitely quite a bit bigger than when we started. I appreciate just, you saying that. But if I'm honest, I think it's just the front because I feel like the rear delts are like, man, got nothing going on there. So here's yeah, I just got we got to bring up your intensity with uh with back, and then the your rear delts will come up. You think? Okay. I was wondering yep, if I should yep. do actual rear delt training, you know? So that was, yeah. Good. Well, it's kind of like, why, why would you do, why would you do a uh, pec deck or why would you do chest flies when you could just do bench press? It's the same sort of thing. Why would we do rear delts when we could just, okay. just got to make sure you're doing your, your back workout, do that until when you're doing your rows, make sure you row until you can't even pull that thing an inch, you know? I'll be honest. I'm on it, man. So I'm, I'm All right. my back days, like, cause I wasn't injured you know, back day was fine. And then legs, I always feel like, oh man, squat again. Let's, let's hit it up. Let's keep going. So yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. You have to put it in every, every video. <laughs> it's like automatic now. It's like knee, knee jerk. It just happens. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Well, so just focus on back day, I guess. And, and you're, you're thinking the real delts will come up. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So I had that question for you on that.
Uh, so food, I just continue on then. Um, all right. I think, I think that's, that's the only questions I got for you for now. So yeah, I'm excited. Sure. Keep going. All right. all right. Cool. Easy enough. Um, let's see here. What else? Is there anything I wanted to add in? Uh, let's see. Uh, no. Yeah. Enjoy your, or you already took your, your cheat meal, but ideally, um, what ideally I'd like to do, and maybe maybe we'll wait a, f a few more weeks just so you get a little bit more, your body gets a little bit less lazy in terms of fat ad adaptation. But maybe after, let's go, let's go two weeks, two weeks more carnivore. And then after those two weeks, um, we can, why don't you plan on having uh, a meal, you know, whatever meal you want to go out to eat with your wife or whatever once a week on the weekends. Then you do that, you know, just have, have basically whatever you want, but just try not to have a, a ton of sugar. That would be my only caveat, you know, okay. try to eat real, uh, try to eat, eat what you want, but eat real food. Well, question for you on that. So, um, I think, I think by doing this, you've made me a lot more insulin sensitive. Uh, That's good. Yep. perhaps yep. I was not before because, um, you were like, I, I would ask you about sugar-free stuff because I'm like dying, like of like, oh, I want to try something, anything other than meat sometimes. And you're like, oh, don't do that. Uh, because, you know, that sugar rush, you, you know, your body lowers your insulin in anticipation that sugar's coming and then it doesn't come, right? And I was from like- having, from, from having the artificial sweeteners. Yep, your body releases insulin as soon as your, the, the sugar, I forget the stupid name, the stupid- uh scientific name but if you have anything sweet whether it's sugar artificial sweeteners your body kicks out insulin even right when it's in your mouth and that's why i don't use and i don't, I don't drink guys but i use i use absolute vodka as my mouthwash i don't use regular mouthwash <laughs> because it but, but i'm serious because it contains artificial sweeteners so if i use listerine you know I, if i use listerine i'm swishing around mouthwash yes it tastes like alcohol but also tastes sweet because they they put artificial sweeteners in your mouthwash so even if even if yeah so here's the thing is let's say I, you know let's say my wife's like oh your breath smells blah 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 well whatever okay right right but but if i use mouthwash i don't use regular mouthwash because the artificial sweeteners uh will trigger my insulin and that'll drive my my uh glucose uh down make me hungry blah 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 and i just don't want to deal with it so that's why so yeah i use I use well, half and half, half and half absolute with uh, water, swish it around, spit it out, and there's there's my uh, there's my hygiene health. Um, but yeah, that's that's the punchline. Is anything sweet triggers insulin? Now, if you're eating an apple or you're eating something, you know, something natural that's sweet, it's not a big deal because guess what? You know, once the glucose enters your system, it lowers it. Everything's great. But that's the problem with artificial sweeteners. Yep. Well, I ignored you four days ago, and I was like, eh. That that's all sounds good. So I put artificial sweetener in my coffee in the morning mm. and uh, tasted wonderful. And uh, oh, my gosh, I felt like ill for like three or four hours. I was dragging through work. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. I was like, oh, my blood sugar must be so low. And at that point, I'm like, well, I'm not going to like break carnivore because I did something. Stupid. Exactly. So it and that's a while to come back up. And that's what makes people, that's what makes people cheat. And that's why people yeah. are sugar hooked and they know this, they know yeah. this, they know this about artificial sweeteners, but they allow it because it makes people eat more junk food. So you, oh so, yeah. so you go have it, you go have a diet Coke and it tastes good. And I love diet Coke, by the way, just by the way, for everyone watching. But if I have a diet Coke, guess what? Insulin gets released. And then guess what? Half an hour, hour later, I'm like getting dizzy. I'm salivating. I'm ravenous because my blood sugar dropped way down. And guess what? Now I'm going to cheat. I got to bring my blood sugar up and cheat with some donuts or something. That's that's what drives people to eat. Also drives people to eat compulsively and a lot of junk. And it makes yeah. you fat. And it makes you fat. That's why artificial sweeteners, you know, make you fat because they jack up your insulin, even though there's no sugar or carbohydrates with them. Um, Let's see here. I got something uh, to add. Something you yeah. that was kind of cool. So you know, it wasn't part of the gig when I signed up with you, but maybe like when, when I decided to go hardcore carnivore, like a couple of days later, you're like, Hey, so, uh, I'm going to diet with you and, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do carnivore as well. Like strict. Cause I guess you were already fat adapted. So you were doing some carbs and you're like, so we're going to go all this, going to do this together. So that actually really helped. Um, because like the one time that I cheated, 
uh, it was my, or I was, I wanted to cheat and I text you and I was like, Hey, it's my daughter's 10th birthday. You know, she thinks Olive Garden is like the nicest restaurant possible. And that's where she always wants to go for her birthday. I, like I, I want to eat something yeah. nice. And you're like, you're like, well, Hey man, it's not your birthday. So what's the deal? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, that's a good point. So, you know, I, I was strict on carnivore and I told, I ordered you know, I told them I want to get some meatballs and a, and a, and a salmon filet. Well, they brought, it, they brought it with marinara sauce. And I was like, I was like, okay, I'm not going to make a big deal about this in front of the family and whatever. So I just went with it. And uh, <laughs> then you're all like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to cheat now. So <laughs> trying to make me feel bad. And it's, and it's funny because it actually did make me feel bad. And so I was hyper strict like after that. Another a, a waiter a week later screwed up and I was like, I'm sorry, I don't do carbs. I told you, I don't want anything. I can't do any of the salsa and the, and all the stuff you put on there. So if you could please remake that. So I, I was like on it since then. So thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. So that's all. Yeah. That's all good. And yeah, you'll know. Yeah. He'll feel, he'll feel a lot better, but once we get you and it, you're not too bad, your body is clearly either you are more adapted well, either you are far more adapted than I was to fat burning uh, when you started, or your body's just able to uh, burn fat more efficiently than I was. Because when I like I went from high carb, high sugar, I felt so bad. I, it took me forever because I my body was just messed up from being high carb, and you lose your you lose the ability to burn fat, uh, or it goes it goes to a very low level, and you have to build that build that back up the mitochondria and the enzymes, but um. I never felt bad. Uh, let's see. Like, training sucked. Like what I was doing, like even when I had less energy, like I had no stamina. And that was yep, not, but it, that yep, it's just, yep, it's just just till once your body brings brings your fat burning uh your fat burning process back up, then guess what? You're gonna be stronger. Yeah, you like, you're, you're, you're gonna... you kept saying that, and I was like, I was like, well, I, regardless if I do or don't, I'm just gonna stick with this. So that was yeah, well, that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me too. You know, I, and like I said, I was king of Mister High Carb. My oatmeal and brown sugar and rice and everything bad and donut. Okay, well, this video is not about <laughs> me, but this video is not about me. But what I wanted to say is, uh, then moving forward, then like uh, at our one month check, and you just keep going what you're gonna do, um, what we've been doing. But what I want to do is let's do the IGF one test in two weeks. Check where check again where your IGF one's at. If it's not cranked up significantly higher, we're going to make more adjustments and we're going to get, we're going to jump the CJC, you know, way up. We'll try, we'll try like 500. <laughs> You're at like 250. We'll try 500 and see if we can bring you back to a 18 year old. Um, uh, so that we'll do the IGF one test in two weeks, keep the diet the same. Uh, and in two weeks, we'll do strict carnivore again for two more weeks. And then you can have your next, go out with your wife on a Saturday or Sunday, have whatever you want again. Um, but after that, after that, if this all goes good, then what we'll do is then we'll just go once a week. You can go out and just have what you want, you know, as long as it's not just pure sugar. All right. And then we'll, we'll just, re yeah, we'll just go from, we'll just go from there and make tweaks as necessary. Get your, get your wet sauna thing that you can use in your house, you know, wake up and do that for, like I said, you know, it'd be good to do that right away in the morning, you know, just, Jared's will be able to, you know, get in there, just, just, uh, get nice and warm, spike his HGH and then start your day, have a coffee in there, read the Bible, whatever you're going to do. And then, um, and then you, you're spiking your HGH twice throughout the day. And then we're also spiking it with the peptide at night. Um, yeah, that's it. Otherwise, yeah. Say, say anything you want, add anything I want and ask any other questions, but that's done. Otherwise that's, that's pretty much it. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, I certainly had a, a great experience and I, you know, I re-upped. So we're on to month number month number two. Uh, two yeah. But yeah, what's cool is I don't think I would have stuck through that kind of sucky part of carnivore. Yeah. And how it, long? How long? Tell them how tell them how long the how long was the bad part? It was like two-ish weeks or so, I'd say. Okay. So I guess less than what I was expecting. I was thinking yeah. I was thinking it was gonna be a month, month and a half. Yeah, mine was two months. It took me two months to get to get fat adapted. But you know, is that because Jared has? You can you can speculate. We can speculate. Maybe, maybe I was already maybe. on a cut, like a pretty severe calorie deficit for a while. So 
I don't know. Yeah, so maybe your your maybe your metabolism was better fat adapted than when I went from high yeah. sugar, high carb to you know what you were doing. So regardless, you know, some it took me two months. Some people it's going to be a month. Some people will be not as badly. Uh, some people will be better fat adapted. Like you, it only took you two weeks, but still, like you said, you know, a lot of people they try carnivore for two days and they're like, oh, I feel bad. Oh, I can't, I can't do two weeks. And then they, they never break their sugar and carb addiction and they never get the benefits either. But the, the, the best thing about it, besides the, besides the performance benefits and the fat loss benefits and all the, you know, the inflammation, you know, you said your face changed a little bit too. You can notice your water weight, right? Didn't you say that you have no water weight in your face or something? Your face, your jawline looks sharper. Didn't you tell me your jawline looks sharper? Was that someone else? Yeah, no, I think that was just from 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 losing weight um okay i i lost a little bit of water weight but i, I don't think i had a ton on me so uh okay. yeah I, I i mentioned i so i shaved for a little bit and my wife was like i was like oh man you look too lean this is like this is like holocaust <laughs> lean so um i'm like okay well i guess i'll let my beard grow back out so <laughs> <laughs> all right so, yeah but anyway all right well <laughs> appreciate it it's been it's been good um the the other thing is i was boring with meats like i didn't have like a big like plan if you will so i i tried i went to a bunch of different stores i know you're a huge aldi fan um but i found a local like meat shop or something that was like local texan uh mm. like food Ow. and stuff it's like the best steaks i've ever had like better than the nice restaurants i mean it's like local really good stuff and like yeah it just made everything better so uh, even ground beef you know i was like like man their ground beef's better i was scared of fat too so everything was like 96 97 percent like that's some dry i mean that's kind yeah, of yeah go eat some you know eat i typically like i told you you can eat anything that's one-to-one -one ratio fat to protein or leader like 80 20 or better right so i eat like 80 85 is kind of what i've been doing lately yeah my my favorite is always 85 to 90 that's typically sometimes i'll have a 90 sometimes i'll have an 85 you know whatever sometimes i'll what i've been doing is i'll take the 90 and i'll i'll just cook it perfect in the pan and, and then I'll throw a bunch of cheese in, melted cheese. I'll put some uh, oh, some sharp cheddar. You mentioned it. That's the way, man. That's yeah. Crazy. Oh, so I'll get some. The sharp cheddar at Aldi's is the. It's cheap. It's like two bucks. You know, the sharp you cheddar at Aldi's. Your favorite are, cheeses. You never did that. Oh yeah, I got. I, 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 yeah, I just finished. I just polished off like four packs. So I'll send you what I. <laughs> They're probably already, already thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll show. I'll, I'll send that to you. But. Cool. Thanks, Sounds good. All right, then that's it. One month check in, uh, and we'll do the we'll do a I guess a longer form video like this. You know, at uh, at the end of the two months, and then we'll reassess from there. But we'll just keep going hard and go go hard for two more weeks, and then uh, we'll switch to you going out every weekend, go out with your wife, and just have whatever you want. You know. So you think I'll be able to put on some mass from here, just with the with the meat and I mean I mean meat, eggs, and cheese, right? So put it this way: you're gonna you. <sighs> regardless of nothing else changing, you're going to put on a little bit more, you're going to put on some more muscle just from bringing your HGH levels up from a 60 year old man to, you know, ideally we're going to put you back where you were when you're 20. No, that's not going to happen immediately, but we'll be able to do that regardless. So you're, even if you would change nothing from this point, you're going to put on muscle just from the HGH coming up from grandpa <laughs> to mm -hmm. where it should be. I don't know why it was so low though. See some men, I don't know why it's, I think it's genetic too, where it's just like, you know, some men hit like 30 or 40 and their body's like, okay, we can die now. So then it's just your HGH goes to nothing. I don't know why that happens, but it, it happens. Um, so you're going to build muscle regardless from that. And then also you're going to build muscle. If we're, we're feeding the protein, animal protein, that's what your body needs to build muscle combined with the essential fats, which you're getting now. You're going to build muscle. From, so we're giving your body everything we need. We fixed it. We fixed the hormones or we're fixing it. We've got to check the levels again, but we're fixed. We fixed your hormones, fix your training. So the stimulus stimulus is there. And then we, and then we give your body, uh, we give your body to the nutrients it needs, essential fats, protein. And if you're eating ground beef, you're getting collagen to resynthesize your shoulder. Also, I talked to you about that. So eat more ground beef. Oh yeah. True that. Sounds good, man. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording now, and then, uh, we, and then that'll be pretty much it.